All right, so what is a Stirling engine? Now, Stirling engine has been around for uh, centuries. Like the, um, the Stirling brothers patented this design uh, back in 1807. It was you know, a long time ago. It's, it's a very efficient engine and uh, it is a closed loop engine, which means there's no exhaust, which makes it great for submarines. Because if you can keep the gas of the engine inside a container, uh, then you don't have to worry about detectability or refreshing it with fresh air like you do a normal diesel engine. So I'm gonna walk you through the four steps of a Stirling engine cycle here. We're starting on the left. First, we're gonna describe what it is. We see the flywheel of the uh, motor at the top. That's gonna be the mechanical en energy that we're creating with our engine. Um, a Stirling engine has two pistons or more, but two pistons at least, um, in a regenerator. The regenerator is like the cylinder. Now, that is only for the example that I have here. The regenerator can be its own body, but let's not get too complicated. The regenerator in this example is the cylinder between the two pistons. Okay, so the heat sink is on one end of the cylinder. The heat source is on the other end. So all this engine needs to run is a difference in temperature. If you have a difference in temperature, one temperature is going to be hotter than the other. So you want the hotter temperature at one end, the heat source, and the heat sink or the colder temperature at the other end. And the more change, the more delta between the hot and the cold end of the regenerator, the more efficient this engine is. So you want a really hot, hot, and a really cold, cold uh, in opposite ends of the cylinder. So as you heat up the hot end of the cylinder, it um, expands the gas that's in there, it's like literally a gas, and that gas as it expands pushes that cylinder, the bottom cylinder up. Look closely at the cylinder, it doesn't touch the sides. So some gas is allowed to go around the cylinders outside. This design makes it an external combustion engine. Okay, this is, that's the part that makes it external. So as it pushes that cylinder up, it begins to compress the gas that's between the two cylinders. What happens when a gas compresses? It gets hot. So as that area between the two cylinders gets hot, it also expands, pushing that cylinder back down and pushing the second cylinder up the same with the same amount of force. And as you can see, that begins to turn the flywheel in a clockwise direction. Now, now that you have the cylinders at maximum change or space between the two, that's where the heat sink comes in and begins cooling off the gas between the two cylinders in the regenerator. And the more efficient it cools, the faster this will go. So as it cools, that gas uh, loses energy and begins to compress again, begins to shrink, and that will bring the top piston down. Also, there's inertia in the flywheel. So flywheel helps keep the momentum of that top piston going down. And as the piston goes down, it compresses again and begins to heat the gas between the two cylinders. Then you simply maintain a heat source at the bottom, that's key, maintain that heat source and the cycle repeats itself. And once you get this going, it's very quiet, it's very efficient, you don't need to add fuel, you just need to add energy to the hot side. This is a Sterling engine. Hey, thanks for watching my YouTube video. If you wanna check out more of my content, come on over to my Patreon page where I have multiple submarine briefs, very detailed videos that go in depth about a class of submarine, whether it's the Akula, the Typhoon, the November. There are about 17 of these briefs right now, uh, including seven audiobook style briefings. And of course, pictures of Bianca over there on the Patreon page. And if you want some more free content, check out my articles on the War Zone. That's right, I'm writing for War Zone magazine now. And I contribute articles a few times a month over there. So definitely check out uh, the War Zone magazine. Hit up Tyler Rogaway's articles as he's a really good writer and he has brought me on board his team as a contributor. And uh, check that stuff out there. All the links are in the description and on the tags above. We'll see you over there. Bye.